Thank you. Thank you. Uh, on va passer par la oui, pas de problème. So, good afternoon, everyone. I will wait for the first. Uh, there's some water here. I think uh, it's not for me, that's for sure. So, let's start for today, shall we? Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. And then we will be brief, and then you can start lunch. So this morning, the President of the General Assembly, Mr. Dennis Francis, spoke at the opening segment of the 2024 ECOSOC Forum on Financing for Development. In his remarks, the PGA highlighted that development finance is more needed than ever, particularly for countries in the global south. President Francis recalled that last year alone, the global public debt reached a staggering $313 trillion, and that developing countries are paying twice as much in interest on their total sovereign debt stocks than developed nations. This is one of the reasons that more than 100 countries have been forced to make the unfortunate choice between servicing the debt, paying the debt, investing in their development, in other words, in their people. The theme of debt sustainability and equality for all and its correlation with sustainable development was one of the topics discussed su during the, sustainable, uh, the Sustainability Week, which concluded on 19 April. And the PGA has also reiterated his call for a reform of the international financial architecture, which was established in 1945 and is constraining to critically needed development finance. President Francis concluded by saying that financing for development is absolutely essential if we are to achieve the SDGs and thus realize a safer, more equitable future. And more on the PGA's speech on the PGA website, www.un.org stroke PGA stroke 78. And tomorrow, President Francis will hold his Guy Up Dialogue, or Morning Dialogue, on the United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestine Refugees in the Near East, UNRWA, with permanent representatives here in the UN. The PGA will also meet today, later today, with UNRWA's Commissioner General, Mr. Philippe Lazzarini, and the last Guy Up Dialogue on UNRWA, you may recall, was held in early March last month. And the PGA has issued a video message to mark the Jewish holiday of Passover. This follows his video messages on Easter and on Muslim holiday of Eid al-Fitr. In his message, the PGA said that today begins the whole Passover observance when the Jewish people around the world gather in celebration of freedom and resilience. He added that Passover is a season of rebirth and renewal, the triumph of hope and faith. It is also a time of reflection and remembrance. The call of Passover is one of unyielding resolve to look beyond the current moment and work decisively together for a more peaceful tomorrow. More on this and other messages as well on the PJ's speeches, please access the PJ's YouTube channel on www.youtube.com slash UNPJ78. And President Dennis Francis will convene a meeting of the General Assembly tomorrow, 23rd of April, on agenda item 63, use of the veto. The stand-alone debate is an opportunity for member states to discuss the issue of the veto and how GA meetings held under the veto initiative can best serve the goals of Resolution 76 stroke 262. On 26 April, it will mark the second anniversary of the resolution being adopted by the General Assembly. You may remember that as well. And last but not least, tomorrow afternoon, President Dennis Francis will visit the new school in New York. Mr. Francis will be at the Institute of Race, Power, and Political Economy to a special address on the transatlantic slave trade, its legacies, and pursuit of reparatory justice as part of the 2024 Henry Cohen Lecture Series. The PJ's address will speak to the international legacy of slavery, shining a spotlight not only on the heinous acts committed, but also on the unrelieved racism and the prejudice that continues to plague people of African descent and our societies today. 
Following his remarks, President Francis will sit in conversation with Institute founding director Derek Hamilton to explore the opportunities and challenges of multilateralism for advancing peace, prosperity, progress, and sustainability. And tomorrow there won't be a video press briefing here. I won't be here, but you will receive our updates on your mailbox. Deshi, how are you today? Go ahead. Hi, Monica. Good afternoon. Good Let's afternoon. continue our conversation with President Francis on Friday. Uh -huh. uh, he said there are two options after the veto in Security Council on the admission of Palestine. Sure. So, the first one, I presume, is I should ask this question. What would be the veto meeting conveying in the GA on the U.S. veto? Okay. As the PJ said, there are two possibilities, and we know these possibilities. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, uh, we have 10 uh, working days after the veto is cast, or a veto is cast, to have the debate in the General Assembly. Uh, but we understand uh, that there are, of course, uh, a second uh, possibility, and the possibility is what happened before, uh, an emergency uh, uh, special session, an ESS. Of course, this is the, the decision by member states, at least two member states, to request that. Um, and we will update you as soon as we hear more about that. Uh, I just want to I just want to have a clarification on this. Sure. Now the admission the admi the admission of new member state committee ref uh, filed this report to Security Council, right? Um, Technically speaking, no matter what, no matter whether the Security Council recommend that report or not, the GA could review that report and to decide whether the Security Council need to redo that. Is that correct? What the GA uh, decides, uh, Deji, as we know, is a matter of uh, decision that uh, yeah, but, but, I mean, that I mean, is taken. Just let, let me know. Just uh, sorry if I can is taken by member states. So member states uh, will gather together in the General Assembly Hall, and member states will announce which action they will uh, take. So I'm not going to, uh, you know, under hypothetical uh, statements, uh, we all know that a, a Security Council session took place, uh, that a veto was cast, and we all know uh, that in 10 working days, a meeting uh, has to take place in the, secret, in, the, in the General Assembly because of the veto in the Security Council. It's an automatic procedure, right? And uh, if my math is right, I hope it is, uh, this, uh, the deadline for the, te the 10 working days uh, will be on the 2nd of May. However, however, uh, we are all journalists here, we hear the news, and if there are new developments on uh, another modality or another uh, type of meeting, as the PG uh, himself uh, said on Friday, answering your question, uh, we will be announcing it here. But I'm not going to announce anything in advance but, because I don't have the information. But what, what I'm asking is mm -hmm. this, this report by the committee could be reviewed by the by General Assembly. And if the member states decide that the Security Council has to redoing all the report again. Like we do not accept the result of your report saying that there are different opinions on whether admission, admit Palestine as the member state for membership. Can the Security Council do that again? You are asking if uh, the General Assembly or member states or some member states uh, don't accept the decision that was taken by the Security Council, i.e. a veto that was cast. No, the report. Oh, the, the report, report. The, the committee report, report not, yeah. not, the, not the veto. I have to look into it for you, but I, I think this is a decision that uh, member states will um, have to make, and uh, we will be announcing here any uh, following up of this uh, particular matter. But thanks. Yeah. I have uh, Hamid, and afterwards, Stefan. Hamid, go ahead. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Let's say the Palestinian uh, delegation now came to the GA mm -hmm. and requested a vote on the uh, validity and the appropriation, appropriate of a resolution to admit Palestine as a full, full mm -hmm. member state. And a large vote under the 10th special emergency session. Mm -hmm. And they got a large number of votes, mm -hmm. over 150 or 160, we don't know. What is the added value for this resolution once it is adopted under 
the United for Peace resolution. As my boss uh, um, says, you are asking me to look into a crystal ball. I have nothing to say about that. Uh, but thank you for your question. But thank you for your question. Um, Stefano, go ahead. Uh, yes, uh, just curious, tomorrow uh, the president is going to the new school, but mm -hmm. um, also the new school has uh, students protesting for uh, Palestine. They occupy just the part of the university. NYU too mm -hmm. is spreading around the city. So my question is, uh, what the president of the General Assembly think about um, the situation where some uh, some um, university has been arresting students, and uh, at the same time, um, the authority of the university has been saying that there has been uh, cases of anti-Semitism. So, what the, sec the what the Secretary General think about this balance between freedom of protest and at the same time the university are worried about the, mm -hmm. the some students that apparently they say that Colombia were uh, under threat because okay. they were Jewish. Well, I, I don't know, but the Secretary General, I mean, you mean the, the, the PG, right? The, the President of the General Assembly. No, no, absolutely, absolutely. You have all these briefings, one after the other, absolutely. Uh, look, I'm not going to go into uh, this, uh, um, but what I can tell you is that this President is a, a strong believer on dialogue, on uh, reaching consensus, on talking instead of uh, going apart, uh, on building bridges instead of, uh, you know, not talking and not constructing uh, bridges and possibilities of dialogue. So um, we have already uh, too much this dissension and uh, too much to what we, we say uh, when uh, both sides go uh, far and far uh, from each other. This so-called polarization, uh, political polarization. And uh, the PJ believes that we have to sit down and uh, uh, be civil to each other and uh, invest in dialogue instead of uh, dissension and, uh, and more, uh, more in a narrative that we will lead to nowhere. That's what he uh, has been uh, saying to his intellectuals. He wants to see more dialogue. He wants to see more understanding. And that's what uh, he says publicly, but also privately. So thank you very much. I will see you on Wednesday. Thank you. Thank you.